Hello. Hello. If it's Monday, it's Beyond Babbitt. And this is your host, Brian Anthony. Well, what are you going to do today, Babbitt? Same thing we do every day. Try and take over the world. <laughs> well, I'm just going to do something a little impromptu today. I'm going to do something winging it at lips. It's been a little over a month. You know, just give it, let's, let's let you do a quick update. I guess it's been a little over a month now since I've been vlogging on YouTube. Um, I think I posted one on Facebook. I'm rarely on Facebook. Um, and I don't have any other social media sites. And so I'm just working out the bugs right now. Working out the kinks. It's going well, I, I may add. Um, so, now Beyond Babbitt, again, the meaning of that is business and beyond. And because the reason I said beyond is because the channel is definitely going to be about business or is about business, but I don't want to be limited there. When I was doing research on how YouTube channels should be, they said you should have like a niche market and you should basically focus on one subject. It's not me. It's not me. That would make me miserable. That would be too much like a job. So I go from topic to topic, subject to subject, character to persona to character. Right? So this is just an update. Can we just talk? Can we talk? Uh, did y'all enjoy the All-Star Weekend? I didn't watch the game. <laughs> I did watch all the shenanigans going on. I don't know if you guys... <laughs> There's a rapper out of New York, and um, he, he wants people to test his gangster. So he goes... To <laughs> he's supposed to be a blood, and he goes to... California, which they told him not to go there. There were different gangs, gang members and whatever. So when he gets the Crips to protect him while he's there. And it, it reminded me of that movie, The Warriors. Have you ever saw the movie, The Warriors, come out to play? And it's like, um, I think it, it's based on a true story from my understanding. Um, so the guy, Cyrus, uh, was in New York. They called all the gangs together. They were going to, I guess, uh, unify the gangs in some kind of way. Kind of like what's going on now with the Bloods and the Crips. Well, let me keep going on this, and I may jump on that. I mean, we're just talking today. There's no format. I wish, I, uh, wish I'd go live one day. Maybe I will. Um, but right now, I'm still perfecting my craft. I don't want, want to say the wrong thing because if you're live, you can't get that out of there. Sometimes if you see the video skipped, I may have said something that I really didn't mean to say, you know, or, or I really shouldn't have said, uh, even if I meant to say it, or even if it was from my heart. You know, sometimes it's just not, it's not the right thing to do. Sometimes it is though. Okay. So the Warriors, they went to, they were a little crew in New York. It was like 50,000 gang members there, a whole bunch of different sets. I think the movie took place in like the late 70s or early 80s. And I believe, like I said, it's based on a true story. So they all went to New York City to like a convention, a gangster gang banger convention. And the guy named... Cyrus, I'm pretty sure. It's either Cyrus or Sirius. It was Cyrus. 
what's his name, and he was um, he the one who called it, got it all together, and he used to say, "Can you dig in?" The crowd, yeah. And so while he was up giving his speech, trying to say it's more of us than them, saying it's more gang members than police, he gave the uh, the number of gang members here, and then he gave the number of actual police on the police force, and we outnumber them, and so on. This is our city, and so on. And before he could finish his um, sentence, before he can finish his speech, pow! Oh! He was eradicated. And uh, I think it was a snitch in the audience who did it, Some a rat who was working both sides, and he pointed to the, the Warriors did it. And everybody was after the Warriors, man. So they was trying to get away. You know, they was all on the radio. It was a, It's a nice movie. If you haven't seen the Warriors, you should see it. So that's what it reminded me of because uh, <laughs> the guy, um, uh, OG Spanky Loco, was chasing him. He, he, <laughs> he, they were at the mall, so they and he showed up because he's the one who said he's one of the main ones who said, you know, when I say you don't come, I mean that. And um, well, I hope OG Spanky Loco is okay because he was really, I think he ran up the stairs or something at the mall, and he was. <sighs> Yeah, it, didn't, <laughs> it wasn't a good look, man. I hope he's okay. And, uh, of course, when he got there, the guy, uh, other guy wasn't anywhere to be found. And uh, some other guys went to his hotel room, and Bosco 100 went out looking for him. <laughs> that was funny as well. They were in the car, man, and it, it seemed like something off of um, – Maybe a scene of Minister Society or something. They riding around. You know, Bosco always, blood, blood, blood. And uh, um, no, I'm getting way off, but I'm, let me finish the story. So um, somebody started honking at him. Bob! And Bosco turned to the car and said, shut up, blood. <laughs> man, that was funny, man. So I bet everybody's going viral. Everybody got a million hits, you know. And so uh, the guy was like, we're not checking in when we get there. And that's terminology meaning gang terminology, gangster terminology, like letting the other gangsters know we're going to be in your city. So they can arrange to, you know, show you around and keep you safe while you're there. Yeah. So um, anyway, that's that. So, I think the guy's back in New York now, and um, I don't. I don't think anything happened. The, the the Hoover Crips, or I think it was the West Side Hoover Crips, kept him safe while he was down there with the shenanigans. <laughs> anyway, back to what I was saying. So these, you know, I'm gonna do more special reports. I see now that uh, my top video, I believe it was the last one I did, is the is the most liked so far, and it's um, it's actually gotten more views than all the others, and it's mainly having to do with men, women, relationships, things like that. So maybe I'll discuss that a lot more. You know, I wanted to do some book reviews, movie reviews, um, talk about different cities, different histories, things like this. Uh, recently watched a Dr. Sabe, 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 Sabe video. It's, it's kind of hard. I, you know, I, I, yeah, the guy was pretty much a genius, man. You know, a lot of the stuff that he was saying I knew, but I knew it from reading. And he said he didn't read books. Interesting. Interesting character. That's what's on my mind right now. Just a little analytics. Just a little analytics. 
Make sure I got it all out. Babbit. <laughs> um, I do have to say this. The tax cuts. The Trump tax cuts. So, they're going to help a lot of people, a lot of families. As you can tell, I'm really not a Trump hater. I really judge people on a case by case, on an individual basis. And I have a greater understanding than a lot of people because I've done a lot more study of history in the past and, you know, don't just buy all the propaganda, everything that's just, just being thrown out there. So, but since this is Trump era, tax cuts only going to do so much for individuals and families. Our economy has been in bad shape ever since 9-11-2001. We've had three rounds of QE, quantitative easing. We're now getting pressure, competition from Russia, China, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia. Venezuela and China are both launching petrodollars, their, their version. Um, trade wars, because when President Trump lowered our taxes over here, so the businesses can come back and people can invest in America from 35%, to anywhere between 15 and 20, maybe 25%. And China lowered theirs to zero for American businesses to draw them right back. So, if I leave it there, then it's great. But it's a lot deeper. This guy named Fitz Springmeyer, who wrote a book about the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati. Some of you, when they use the word Illuminati, you start thinking conspiracy. Well, of course, there have been conspiracies all throughout time. <laughs> Just because you know it's a conspiracy doesn't mean it's not one. So, things have to play out. And so, I'm not going to continue with that, but sooner or later I'm going to discuss conspiracies and a lot of other things. Lord willing. We have to realize, we have to control our thinking, have to expand our thinking. Why are we thinking so small? Why are we thinking so in a box and caged? Why are we saying words like can't? Why is that in your vocabulary? See, these words will limit you. Because everything is can until it's can. You know what I mean? You can't build an airplane. You can't fly until you build an airplane and you fly. Does that make sense? Why do we use that word can't? We may say um, have, has not yet or haven't yet. Yeah but can't. What's prohibiting you? Now that's the beyond and the babbit.
relationships. Do you think it's something they can put in the food to make women not like men or men not like women? Yes, there is. Have you ever heard of a gay bomb? That if it's exploded, it will cause women to start liking women and men to start liking men and they do things. Allegedly, it's supposed to exist. Our country is supposed to have one. Hmm. Have you ever heard of UBI? Universal Basic Income? Hmm. How would you like that? You think they're pushing us towards that? What is UBI? UBI is... Um, they're estimating less than a decade from now that AI, artificial intelligence, is going to take over. It's going to human humans aren't aren't going to be needed. Uh, robots and machines and computers are going to run everything. They'll be able to think and learn and repair themselves and uh, uh, duplicate themselves. And so they're, they're saying that they're going to have the humans stay at home and just watch TV and you'd get something like welfare, universal basic income, UBI. How would you like that? You can stay at home and play PlayStation all day, Xbox or whatever the new thing is. Or you can stay home and drink and do drugs all day. Or have sex all day. Hmm. Maybe there's something productive you can do besides these things all day. Besides watch television all day. Or get on social media all day. Hmm. But basically, you'd be receiving something for nothing because... AI is going to be making the money. They're just going to cut you in on a share, on a piece. Is that possible? Well, how about this? In case you didn't know, all of you Uber fans, Uber rolled out autonomous cars in Pittsburgh last year, 2017. What is an autonomous car? Well, it's a car that drives itself, a driverless car. And it was doing routes, or they were, there were several. And I believe they, um, and there are at least, there are at least now five different companies working on autonomous vehicles and even autonomous 18 wheelers. Yes, that drive themselves. Yes, they'll be rolling out this year, next year. So now is it feasible that the jobs that you think that a computer will never be able to turn this big 65-foot trailer down this little alley without a driver, a human driver? You can't never back it up to the dock and bump that dock. Without, you know, something going wrong. That's a heck of a... Uh, we'll see. We will see. We're going there quickly, guys. So what job do you think can't be replaced? Right? Anything you can do in an office. Most of that stuff is outsourced. India, China, the Philippines... Taiwan, 
even Mexico. Yeah, so the dollar is, even though the dollar is falling, it's a lot stronger than their currencies, their money. So capitalism not brain drain. Blockchain. Did you know that there's something like over 2,000 IOCs? ICOs, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. ICOs, initial coin offerings, coins. Bitcoin is not the only one. You know, Ripple is backed by the banks. You know that the Fed is signed on to the blockchain. You should pull up Lynette Zhang, ITM Trading. She did a real good breakdown of that. And the ACC coin. Interesting. So where are we going? Did you know the lifespan of a fiat currency is only 42 years? It has to be retooled every 42 years. You know about Bretton Woods, right? Our dollar was last tooled in 1971 when they took us off the gold standard. Was that Nixon? And put us on the petrodollar. That really made us the world reserve currency. Because the deal with OPEC, the deal with the Saudis was. Before anyone in the world can buy your oil. They first have to come buy our dollars. Because that's the only thing that you're going to be able to accept in payment for your oil. This is a U.S. dollar. So that kept us strong. Because other than that, I mean, we just have a fiat money because it's not backed by gold. Why is gold important? The wealth of nations. So... It's been a couple of years now that, just for a side note, in 1913, the Federal Reserve was created, a privately owned bank, conspiracy. Mm -hmm. That's who prints our money. Before that, we printed our own. And every dollar that's printed, we owe them interest on it. But see, they had a 100-year charter. So 1913 plus 100 years is 2013. Why are they still operating? Did they sign a new charter that we don't know about? Or maybe they're just going to kill the dollar. Maybe that's what they've been trying to do. Maybe if President Trump wouldn't have got it in, it would have been dead by now. So, and this is why I say the tax cuts, they're going to be most beneficial for those who own businesses. Who have 501c3s, nonprofits, who have sole power proprietorships, partnerships, LLCs, corporations, the works. It's going to be beneficial because that keeps the wheels rolling, gets the economy going. Yeah. Do business nationally, worldwide. Worldwide. It gets the economy going. So, and what else do we have to talk about?
Are you liking the QAnon drops? What do you think's behind that? It's definitely not one person. It's definitely a team of people. I believe it's military intelligence. And yes, I do believe that uh, President Trump is in on it or knows something about it because there have been too many coincidences and there are no coincidences. Is that working though? You think there are really 10,000 indictments? You think there was really a coup in Saudi Arabia? You think that we can indict 13 Russians that live in Russia? <laughs> well, has the Ukraine cooled off yet? Or are they still trying to get that thing going? How about Syria? Do we, does the U.S. really have to leave? How about Israel? North Korea. Is Kim Jong-un the rocket man? Is he playing nice now? Is that really run by the CIA? Conspiracy? Hmm? You tell me. We're just talking. I'm just talking. Well, one thing I do know is preparedness is a must. Using your own mind is a must. Don't believe everything you, you're, you're told. Do some research. Do as much as you can. It's okay to read books. It's okay to ask questions. These are perilous times. Because if there are unscrupulous individuals who are at the top and they're getting close to getting caught, don't you think there'd be a distraction or several distractions? What did Nino Brown say? <laughs> he said if he goes down, everybody's going down. Yeah, so you think that the deep state would start a nuclear war to keep from being court-martialed. Hmm. Hmm. So these bloodlines, bloodline, that's what we wanted to talk about. You know, I'm blessed to have been able to work with a lot of people from the continent of Africa and the Middle East, especially Eastern Africa. And the traditions are still like the traditions in the Bible, a lot of them. And um, bloodline is important. So the toes and the Me Too's. It's a little different over there. So we're here. A woman puts off relationship and family to try to get an education and career. Well, that takes up her 20s. Takes her to her 30s. Well, that gives her about if everything's okay at that point. Ten-year window to have kids. And she's not even dating. Or not anyone. She's dating anyone worth marrying. So when a woman hits 35, and, and if she hasn't had her kids, or gotten married, things change for her. Now for a man, if he's healthy, can have kids until he's until his last day if he's healthy but you have to take care of yourself a lot of men do and some let themselves go but yeah his 
His sperm is a swim. Um, and for those who don't, look up Dr. CB for the men who have problems. Look up Dr. CB, Seba. I mean, he's dead and gone now. Conspiracy. But some of his techniques, the things he used, he was a herbalist. No surgery was effective. And so he has a lot of students worldwide. We're trying to keep it alive. Someone may be able to help you there. Okay. The woman turns 30, 35. And she's, um, her fertility starts to wane. unbeknownst and unknowing to her. That's one of the things that makes her more attractive. The ability to be able to give life. Yeah, the ability for, if a man falls in love with you, you're able to, he's able to have a child by you. It means something, it does. It does. So, men get burned at a young age, relationships, whether it's marriage or having kids young, once them folks are in your life, it tastes a little sour, have to move along differently. And so the man start to focus on the bag, on the money. And guess what? The more money a man has, the women come. Even if they can't stand him. He can be an a-hole. But <laughs> the women will put up with it because he has the bag. So now... Every man wants to have the bag. It's a little different now than what it was like, say, when my parents or grandparents were going out, growing up, you know, closer to, um, as you go back closer to those who came off the boat, so they say. Because you know, we, a lot of us were aborigine. We were already here. And we mixed with our other side, which came on the boat. And we may have other things mixed in with us as well. Our ancestors would get married. Teens. Teenagers. And stay together. Till death do them part. Especially after the um, end of the Civil War. Free the slaves. Where master can't just split your part and sell you or take your kid and sell them or do whatever. So the families were really strong. So we had. Then the families created communities. Well raised bunch of group of people you know so many great achievements so the propaganda had to you know there were government programs put in conspiracy to uh, disrupt to keep us from because of fear it's like if you beat a dog you raise a dog and you beat it then when the dog is growing, you're already scared that the dog is going to do something to you. So that type of thing. Never should be the dog. So.
Family was important. I'm sure everyone has. You know, maybe your mother, maybe your aunt, maybe your grandmother, great grandmother, somebody. You know, a woman who had five kids, 10 kids, 15 kids, maybe 20. Yes, one woman. Yes, that was fashionable. So what wasn't anything wrong with that, you know? Especially if everyone turns out to be fine. Now they tell us, "Oh, you have one kid, or no kid." Wow. And that's supposed to be fine. That was blessed to be fruitful and multiply. Well, anyway, so I listened to Ashley W's. <laughs> like her, she has a nice perspective on things. It seems like she has a good grasp, a good understanding of, of the, you know. And that's how you have to. You have to be able to look through both sides of the lens, you know, for, for a relationship to work, that's another human being. It's another person. You may not agree on everything. So, compromise.